I thank you all once again and proudly introduce Mr. Peter Richardson speaking on behalf of the Atheist Foundation of Australia. <laughs> Dictators and other rulers have always been patrons of the arts because the best artists produce the best propaganda. Splendid colonial architecture awed the natives and impressed enemies. Statues made ordinary men look like demigods. Great music uplifts the spirits and, looks, and uh, lends grandeur to royal occasions. And temples decorated with acres of stained glass and frescoes depicting religious myths have convinced even the most sceptical that God must be real, keeping Christianity in power way beyond its use by date. Thinking people hope the invention of the camera would be an antidote to such propaganda by presenting reality <coughs> instead of supernatural fantasies. Sadly, the camera is an even better liar than the paintbrush, and today most people's opinions are formed by television programs. Meanwhile, Greenland's ice melts, seas rise, Weather patterns change, and life figures on the brink because humans have forgotten that we're just a submalian species, living in a natural world on which we depend for survival. Much of the blame for this attitude must lie with religious leaders who vehemently assert that humans are not mere animals. We are the apex of God's creation, so there can never be too many of us, and He takes a personal interest in everyone, worrying about what we're thinking and wearing whether we masturbate, how we do our hair, the sex of the person we love, and whether we grovel in unquestioning ritualised worship while intoning suitably humble prayers. To prevent thinking people from questioning this absurdity, religious chiefs extol the virtues of faith and spread the lie that atheists and other unbelievers are miserable, hedonistic, materialistic anarchists, <laughs> devoid of principles, Destroyers of family, lacking moral fibre, and this vilification continues today, often making life difficult for those not prepared to conceal their disbelief. It's worth noting that anyone who dared to vilify religious believers like this could be prosecuted, but atheists, it seems, deserve neither respect nor protection. They are contemptible, the lowest form of humanity, if they are in fact human. It's not yet as dangerous to be an unbeliever in Australia as in the United States, but all religions are working on it, and therefore it's very, very brave of Duran to uh, mount this exhibition and equally brave and praiseworthy of the sinners to allow their portraits to be hung. If we don't want our children to be taught that creationism is a valid alternative to evolution, if we want the right to plan our families, if we dislike the idea of being stoned to death for rejecting religion or cheating on our spouses, if we want children to grow up able to think for themselves, and if we want the right to choose what we wear, then we'd better do something to stop the slide towards theocratic rule. The voice of reason must be louder than the diatribes of dogma. Free thinkers must ask questions and insist on rational answers, not merely it's in the holy book. The claims of religions must be examined and tested by disinterested parties. Rationalist, free thought and atheist societies that once thrived in our towns and cities should be revived. And we should demand that the media comment objectively on the increasingly blatant attempts by religious leaders to influence politics. Multiculturalism seems a noble concept until we realise that cultures are for the most part embedded in religion. If you accept the culture, then you must accept the religion, even if it means in demeaning women, enforcing dress codes or sexually mutilating young girls and boys. You see, cultures do not respect individuals. They demand conformity and persecute those who dare to differ. Pluralism, on the other hand, respects individuals. Pluralism doesn't deny any culture the right to exist. It merely insists that membership is voluntary. Pluralism permits everyone to think and act how they please, as long as they grant everyone else the same right. I have no problem with adults believing whatever religious notions that they like, as long as they don't indoctrinate children and allow me the right to disbelieve their twaddle. <laughs> <laughs> That's why this exhibition is important. It's a step towards encouraging free thinkers to assert their right to not believe 
to ask questions and demand reasonable answers. As the entire world knows, Australia and the USA are reluctant to address the problem of climate change. This has a lot to do with religion. Many members of Parliament reckon they believe in an all-seeing, all-knowing, all-powerful Superman in the sky, who created Earth as a sort of preschool, where we, his most precious creations, can learn how to please him. It's what comes after death that's the real thing, eternal life. Therefore, it doesn't matter what happens on this planet. It's just a temporary stopover on our way to eternal bliss in the theme park of our choice, somewhere out in space. <laughs> or, if we displease our loving Lord, an eternity of torment. Over the last decade in Australia, billions of tax dollars, along with many of the social services previously run by governments, have been given to religious organisations to profit from and run as they please. Vast sums of money have been taken from our taxes and used to maintain religious schools that are now better equipped than state schools. Enterprises owned and operated by religions compete unfairly with private enterprise because they pay no tax on annual profits, which in recent years have amounted to $8 billion for the Catholics and $2 billion each for the Anglicans and United Churches. And all other religions, of course, are doing their best to catch up.